We're now going to talk about quadric surfaces. Now a general quadric surface is a surface in three-dimensional space described by an equation of the form ax squared plus by squared plus cz squared plus dxy plus exz plus fyz plus gx plus hy plus iz plus j equals zero. A plane would be a surface where you just have the last four terms. Now, if we, then we, when we allow quadratic terms, we get a quadric surface. Now, in this course, we're not going to consider the most general quadric surfaces, but we're going to look at some of the basic examples that you should know. And before I start showing you these examples, let me just make a couple of remarks about how to sketch. So you can set z equals 0 to find the intersection with the xy plane. You can also set z equal to some non-zero constant to find horizontal slices of your surface, which are not on the xy plane, but are above or below it. And likewise, you can set y equals 0 to find the intersection with the xd plane. And you can set x equals 0 to find the intersection with the yz plane. So this is often very helpful in getting a rough idea of what our surface looks like. Our first basic example is the ellipsoid. The equation for an ellipsoid is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared plus z squared over c squared equals 1. Here a, b, and c are positive constants, so you can choose different values of a, b, and c and you'll get different ellipsoids. Now before sketching the surface in three-dimensional space, let's first sketch its intersections with the coordinate planes. Now setting z equals zero, we get the intersection with the xy plane. So we just ignore the z term and we have x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals one. You'll recognize that as an ellipse. It hits the x-axis at a and minus a, and it hits the y-axis at b and minus b. And if a happens to be larger than b, then it will be squashed like this. Otherwise, it will be squashed the other way. Likewise, we set y equals 0 to find the intersection with the xz plane. And that's another ellipse hitting x at a and minus a and z at c and minus c. And x equals 0 gives the intersection with the yz plane, which is a third ellipse, which hits y axis at plus and minus b, and it hits the z axis at plus and minus c. Okay. Now the three-dimensional surface looks like this. So first let's draw the x, y, and z axes. And the surface is then going to look something like this. So the the intersection with the xy plane is going to be a curve like this. And hits the y-axis at b and minus b, and it hits the x-axis at a and minus a. And the intersection with the um, xz plane is going to be a curve like this. 
it hits the z-axis at c and minus c. And the intersection with the yz plane is going to be a curve, which is basically this curve which I've drawn here. Okay, so that's an ellipsoid. It's a little hard to draw really accurate pictures of these, but this is not an art class, so it will not require super accurate pictures. Our next example is a hyperboloid. So the equation of a hyperboloid has the form plus or minus x squared over a squared plus or minus y squared over b squared plus or minus z squared over c squared equals 1. So here not all the signs are the same. And a, b, and c are positive constants. So if all the signs are the same, if they're all positive, then it's the ellipsoid, which we've already seen. And if all the signs are negative, then it's actually the empty set, because there's no solution to minus x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared minus c squared over c squared equals 1, because we're talking about real numbers here, so the square of a real number is never negative. Okay, so the first example, so there's, there are two cases depending on how many plus and minus signs there are. So the case one is when there are two, two plus signs. And that looks like, for example, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared minus z squared over c squared equals 1. Now if we intersect with the xy plane by setting x, excuse me, by setting t equal to 0, we get an ellipse as before. If we look at the intersection with the xz plane by setting y equal to 0, now we get a hyperboloid, excuse me, a hyper, hyperbola. We have the hyperbola x squared over a squared minus z squared over c squared equals 1. Now this intersects the x-axis at a and minus a, but it doesn't intersect the z-axis because if you also set x equal to 0, you get the equation minus z squared over c squared equals 1, which has no real solutions. So the intersection with the xz plane looks like this. And the intersection with the yz plane is similarly a hyperbola. which intersects the y-axis at plus or minus b. You can also look at the intersection with horizontal planes that are not the xy-plane by setting z equal to a constant. So if z is a constant, this is also an ellipse. But when z is not 0, the size of this ellipse grows. So the final surface ends up looking like this. So the horizontal slices are ellipses. This ellipse is smallest in the xy plane and then bigger for other horizontal slices. And then vertical slices are parabolas. And I'll put the axes on this picture. And this surface is called the hyperboloid of one sheet. The other case will have two different pieces, which and it will be the hyperboloid of two sheets. So case two of the hyperboloid is when there are two minus signs. For example, we could have the equation minus x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared plus z squared over c squared 
equals 1. Now if we set z equals 0 to find the intersection with the xy plane, how many solutions are there? Well, there are none because we can't have minus a sum of squares equal a positive number. So we get the empty set. So this surface does not intersect the xy plane at all. If we set y equals 0 to find the intersection with the xc plane, we get a hyperbola. So if we just ignore the y term, we get a hyperbola. If we set z equals 0, as before, this has no solution. But if we set x equals 0, we find that it intersects the z-axis at plus c and minus c. So we get a hyperbola like this. And setting x equals 0, we get a similar picture. So the final surface ends up looking like this. So we'll draw the axes first. So there's an upper piece which looks like this. And there's a lower piece which looks like this. And this is called the hyperboloid of two, two sheets because it is two pieces. Now what are these horizontal slices? Well, so the horizontal slices you can find a horizontal slice by setting z equal, equal to some constant. Let's call it, I don't know, d. Now if this constant is less than c, then in, if you look at the equation over here for the hyperboloid, you'll get that minus the sum of squares is a positive number. So there's no solution. If d is equal to c, then we get a single point where x and y are equal to 0. And if the absolute value of d is greater than c, now you'll get that the sum of x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is a positive number, and you'll get an ellipse. So these horizontal slices here are ellipses. That's the hyperboloid of two sheets.